Our gracious Father in heaven, this morning as we enter into your glorious presence to worship you in spirit and in truth, we ask that you will open our hearts and our minds to be calibrated towards the counsel and the teaching of your word and the impression of the Holy Spirit. So bless us as we learn to worship as the body of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. The scripture reading today is uh, taken from the book of Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 6, verse 4 to 9. And I'll be reading from the uh, English Standard Version. He, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love your Lord, your God, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlet between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. May the Lord bless the reading.
Can we say amen once again? Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Before Pastor Johnny comes to speak, uh, Pastor Johnny is no stranger to most of us, but for our visitors and guests and those new to us, Pastor Johnny is the conference president of our Seventh day Adventist conference right here in Singapore since 2011. He's happily married to his wife, Dr. Tan Pei Yi, and we'd like to welcome him to our pulpit to share God's word this morning. A very good morning and a very happy Sabbath to all. Years ago, when I was the pastor of one of the churches in Singapore, during the Vacation Bible School, or we call it a character building school. I was involved with a bunch of uh, primary school kids. And uh, we had the best time together. And all the games like hide and seek, police and thief, and uh, who could run the fastest to the finishing point. And at the height of that celebration, one of the kids raised his hand and said, Pastor, can you organize an outing for a group of us? That we can go cycling, we can go swimming, we can go bird watching and do all the stuff that we probably couldn't do with our parents' observation. So I said, okay, we will do that. So I promised the kids and uh, maybe about 14 or 15 of them all together. And so they waited in anticipation that that glorious day will come. One week passed, nothing happened. Two weeks passed, nothing happened. A month had come and gone, nothing had happened. Two months had passed and one day my wife came home with this anxious remark. And she said to me, say, you know what? You're going to be a NATO pastor. I said, why? She said, the kids complained to me that you have promised them for a day of wonderful adventure. And that had not happened. So you have heard their cries, but you have not acted on it. Wow, that really hit me. Today, we want to discuss the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is basically a collection of many sermons preached by Moses to all of Israel shortly before his death. It's a motivational message urging Israel's faithful obedience to the covenant where the Lord has given to them the Ten Commandments 40 years earlier at Sinai. So where were the Israelites at this point in time? Well, if you look at the scripture, uh, right now, the people of God, the Israelites, they came on the eastern side of the Jordan River, on the plains of Moab, across from the city of Jericho. Now, they were about to set foot on the Promised Land, but they had to cross River Jordan. And that land was promised to them centuries earlier, to their forefathers. And now the children who had left Egypt were now adults, ready to conquer and settle into the Promised Land. And before that could happen, Moses reiterated uh, the covenant and God's faithfulness to them. So Deuteronomy is a collection of all these sermons shared by Moses to the people of Israel. If you go back in time, some 3,400 years ago, the Israelites had just witnessed the miracles of God almost on a daily basis. Remember the ten plagues? upon the Egyptians that forced the hands of Pharaoh to release all of the Israelites who were slaves in the land to build those gigantic pyramids. When Pharaoh changed his heart, he sent his soldiers to recapture the enslaved people. And you know the story. His entire army perished in the water. In the next 40 years, in the wilderness experience, the nation of Israel witnessed the miracles of God on a daily basis. The cloud would shield them from the burning sun, and at night, the column of fire would provide heat and comfort to God's people. And, and heavenly food 
you know the name, known as manna, uh, was provided to them on a daily basis. And they complained about the healthy vegetarian food and the Lord provided quills for them. And when they were thirsty, water would gush out from the rock. And when they were attacked by poisonous snakes, all they would do just to look at the bronze serpent and they would be healed. And throughout that 40 years, they were ambushed and attacked consistently and regularly by foreign enemies. But the Lord miraculously re rescued them. It is interesting to note, just because you have seen and experienced the miracle of God on a daily basis doesn't mean that you will remain faithful and obedient to the Lord. Agree? Just because you have seen it and experienced it on a daily basis, it is not an absolute guarantee. And Moses in Deuteronomy basically is to trying to reiterate these important lessons. Because remember just 40 years earlier when Moses went up to Mount Sinai to seal their covenantal relationship with, with God? What did the Israelites do? They built the golden calf and worshipped the idol. And so as a result, they could easily reach the promised land within 18 months after they have left Egypt. But because of their, one word, disobedience, they had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. There is a price to pay for disobedience. And in life, this principle applies across all levels. And here, why is this book so important? This is known as the five, one of the five books in the Torah, in the Jewish community. And Deuteronomy is not a book that we often would read for devotions. But I want to encourage you because if you understand the context, Moses addressed these two words, all Israel, at least 12 times, repeatedly in the book of Deuteronomy. It is a renewal of the covenant with God at Mount Sinai and that was forged in the wilderness. And you will find that the book delivered to Israel's God's instructions. Basically, the book of Deuteronomy is to teach Israelites, how to live a blessed life in the promised land. 40 years have come and gone. Now they are on the verge, ready to cross the river Jordan into the promised land in spite of the gigantic difficulties and challenges they would encounter. And it is very clear in the book of Deuteronomy, the blessings of obedience as well as the curses of disobedience. And they had already experienced that throughout the 40 years in the wilderness. Now, all the pains, all the sufferings, and all the challenges that they had encountered firsthand in the wilderness. And so, right here in the book of Deuteronomy, um, it is God's instruction for His people that this is to be codified into the heart and mind of every Israelite. It's interesting to note that uh, more than uh, uh, maybe 18 months ago, uh, I think it came out on the newspaper, that after the pandemic, so to speak, uh, the Department of Psychiatry or uh, Singapore General Hospital shared that 10% of the population in Singapore suffers from anxiety and, uh, and uh, depressive disorders. Many of them were anxious. They were distraught because of the changes in the economy. Many of the Singaporeans were concerned about the future, their jobs, their security, their retirements, their health care, and so on and so forth. Likewise, the Israelites were very anxious. Because for 40 years, they had been wandering the wilderness. And the future remains unknown. Even though they know the trajectory, is to cross the river Jordan into the promised land. And they were feeling very anxious and sometimes uh, extremely concerned about the future. 
especially with the younger generation who had not experienced many of the miracles of the past. And so Moses basically to sum up and say that these are the instructions for you. So Deuteronomy, if you sum up the book, is divided into three sections. Chapter 1 to 4 is to look back of God's mercy and grace. They had pursued the Israelites in spite of their disobedience. And chapter 5 to 26 is to encourage the Israelites that the faithfulness of God had been with them. So they are to look up to Him. And the last few chapters, 27 to 34, is to look ahead as they will walk in faith to claim the promise God had for the Israelites. But there is one word here, because just now the scripture reading is found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 to 9. In the Jewish community, this is known as a Shema. Uh, in the English language, it's translated as the word hear or listen. But I'm going to expound a little bit on the word because the English translation uh, had a dichotomy. I could hear you, but not necessarily I will obey. This is how we think. Uh, the Shema is the essence of every Jewish community every Jewish home. Why? Because it says here, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And it says there very clearly in the Shema that you are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And this is known as the Jewish prayer. And very often, uh, we thought, yeah, okay, so pastor, what's the big deal? I've heard it. Now, you have heard it doesn't mean you would act on it. And the Jewish understanding of the word Shema is very different. Um, let me explain. In, in the whole essence of the book of Deuteronomy, you could forget all that I've said, but remember Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 to 9. If you have a chance, this afternoon, go back, Read again and again. Because this is where the Jewish community would, in particular, would write onto little, small little scroll of paper. They like to roll it up, tie it onto their uh, forehead or their, as an armband, as a reminder. It codifies the essence of God's direction. Listen, hear me. Now, why is that so? Because the word Shema is more than just sound waves entering into my ear or your ear. It, is, it can be translated as um, pay attention to, respond to what you hear. But I want to, to just share, for example, the psalmist in Psalm 27. The psalmist cried out to the Lord and he said, hear me as I pray. The word hear is from the word Shema or Shema. Be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. The word Shema here, it is out of that, that expression to God that, Lord, if you, hear, if you have heard me, do something. It's not just hearing. Hearing and doing. In fact, um, in Hebrew language, there is no equivalent word of translation of the word obey. Obedience and listening are two words in the Hebrew mind into one word, Shema or Shema. In other words, if you have heard the word of God, you will obey. As simple as that. Listening and obedience, they are together. It's into one word. Uh, it is said that... Uh, the, uh, once the president of the uh, United States of America, Franklin Roosevelt, uh, during the World War II, uh, often he would receive uh, hundreds of guests at the White House. And he complained one day to his, uh, one of his advisors that 
Nobody had paid attention to what he said. So one day during a reception, he wanted to do an experiment. So as the uh, dining reception uh, came uh, to an end, uh, the guests would leave the White House. And one by one, they would shake hands with the President of the United States of America. And then he would murmur softly, I murdered my grandmother this morning. But most of the guests would, would shake his hand and say, Marvellous, uh, President, keep up the good work. No, we are proud of you. God bless you, sir. And he was still murmuring, This morning I killed my grandmother. And everybody, people were not listening. And then it was said that not until the end of the line, the ambassador from Bolivia heard that. And he didn't know what to respond. And then quietly, he whispered to the president, I'm sure she deserved it. <laughs> Very often, I think we heard, we heard today, uh, we, are, we have all kinds of voices that will speak to us. But when God speaks to us, do we merely listen? In the Hebrew understanding, there's no such thing. If you had listened, you would obey. It's one word. Shema. Hear and obey. So when we ask God to Shema, we're asking God to hear us and do something, to act on it. And so this is the understanding of the Hebrew mindset. So there's no other word. And that is, that is why... Uh, if you read Exodus 19 verse 5, it says that, Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant. The word obey comes from the word Shema. If you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. That was obedience and listening. Hearing the word of God, they are all encapsulated in one word. When I was a young boy, uh, I don't know whether they still do that in Ballester. Uh, I think many of the Sabbath school teachers would know. On the 13th Sabbath of every quarter, all the children would line up and they would have to recite uh, Bible text uh, before the congregation. I was only a five-year-old boy and the Sabbath school teacher showed pity on me and found me one of the shortest verses, not the shortest, but one of the shortest verses in the Bible. And I couldn't forget that. I, 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 I cannot remember all the Bible texts that I have recited before, but this one I remember, 1 Samuel 15, 22, because it's only five words. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Now, I didn't understand that, but years later, I realized that the word obedience comes from the root word Shema. In other words, to obey means what? Is to be able to hear the word of God and to act on it. That seals the covenantal relationship between me and God. So no wonder the Bible says, obedience is better than sacrifice. You could sacrifice a lot, but not necessarily you will be obedient to the word of God. But if you hear the word of God and obey in all his instructions, sacrifice will come as a result of that. And, and you know, this is the Chinese New Year. Uh, Pastor Matthew Yuan here, uh, I think he, he understands uh, this character better than I do. Do you know, in, in the uh, traditional writing of the character love, there's a word heart there. Right? In the simplified Chinese character, unfortunately, the heart is removed. So the modern Chinese character of love uh, uh, is devoid of the heart. How can you love someone without the heart? And so in, 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 the, uh, in the word love, I love you, in, in the Chinese thinking, is that I will give you my heart. I give you my heart and walk with you. That, that, that is uh, very romantic, especially uh, for those of you who celebrated Valentine's. If you do something nice to your spouse and your wife, Good for you. If you have not done, please do it because uh, there will be consequences of disobedience. <laughs> you know, uh, last year, uh, 
it was Valentine's. I didn't do anything. And then last year, we had been married for 30 years. And I forgot about it. And then, I received a text message from my wife. That morning, I was in the office at Seven Eye Thompson. I said, what are you doing tonight? I said, oh, tonight, tonight very busy. And then, she did not reply anymore. So, I was uh, driving on my way home. Then I realized something is missing. She is uneasily quiet today. So I call her. And you know, when you call, you can tell by the tone, there was this very reluctant response to every single word. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So I thought, something is missing. So, so I asked, what have I done wrong? I said, nothing. Well, nothing means something. <laughs> Terribly, something must have happened. So I thought, what's so important is today? They dawned on me, it's my 30th anniversary. Now, it was almost about 7 p.m. at night. So I thought, oh boy, I've done nothing. I've forgotten about her. And I keep saying to her, I love you, I care for you, but words mean nothing uh, uh, to your wife who had married with you for 30 years, the, the ups and downs. And so, I scrambled, I said, where can I buy flowers? So I said, I need 30 roses, 30 years, right? Okay, the simple mindset is, I need 30 roses. So, but 7 p.m. Now, most of the florists uh, will have clothes or they have, and they don't have flowers. So, I scramble. You know what? I parked my car on the side of the road. I kept calling. Is there any, 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 any shop that has still 30 uh, roses? I, after many calls, I found one um, florist at Passeris. It's like another half an hour drive. And the lady said, we are closing at 8 p.m. I said, okay, wait for me, I'm coming. I said, but I don't know you're coming, like, pay now. So I had to pay, I scramble. Long story short, I got the flowers. When I reached home, there was this uneasy quietness. I went in, I said, I'm sorry, uh, this is my gift for you. I said, I have shama you, I have listened to your cries, and now I have obeyed and heard you. This is my flower. Okay, that change the whole circumstances. Is it possible that often we express our love for God in, in, in words, but not in deeds? And very often, we, we, we talk about uh, love for God, love for people, but where are the tangible fruits? The people can say that by your fruits, they will know you are the Lord's disciples. And so, in, in, in the context of Deuteronomy, the emphasis is that as the Israelites prepare to go into the Promised Land, Moses' final reminder to them is all compact into the book of Deuteronomy. And if you were to compact that book further down, it's found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 to 9. It is basically the prayer, the Shema. It's to be obedient and hear the word of God. So if you hear the word of God, you must obey. And that is why uh, if you go to Revelation, many of the translations, because in Greek language, it's a bit different from Hebrew, um, they tend to have a dichotomy between listening and obeying. So many of the translators will do that. Uh, in, in, in the letters to the seven churches. Whoever has ears, let them hear, right? And many of the translators will put, and obey. Why the word obey? Because in Greek understanding, there's a dichotomy between hearing and obeying. But in the Hebrew mindset, there's no such thing. Hearing and obeying is just one word. If I heard, I will obey. And that is why the letter to the seven churches is that whoever has ears, let them hear and obey what the Spirit says to the churches. If you hear the voice of God today, like in Hebrews chapter 4, do not harden your heart. I think that is the repeated emphasis. And especially, I think, as we comb through the, the entire book of, of the Deuteronomy, 
In, in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19 to 20, this is what Moses' conclusion to the Israelites. He says, I have said before you life and death. Now, listen to these words, life and death. Is that important? No, we will say that this is life and death. This is important. And he used the same words. I have said before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. And the encouragement is, so choose life that you may live, you and your descendants, by loving the Lord your God. Now, this is the word. Shema. Obeying His voice. Obeying His voice. So some translation says, hear His voice. Obeying His voice. Holding fast to Him. For this is your life and the length of your days. I thought, that's life. Our life with God is to be marked by faithfulness, loyalty, love, and devotion. And, and, and the Bible used the marriage as the symbol, as the metaphor of that relationship. And the word Shema is magnified hundreds of times through the life of Jesus of His absolute obedience to God. Perhaps this morning, you may be wondering, so, Pastor, what is the message? I say, number one, like the Israelites, they were anxious and concerned about the future. Now, I think this quarter Sabbath school lesson talks about the preparation. And today, now this whole week, is, is about the prophetic timeline, the, the understanding that the events are happening around us. And we know that Jesus is, is coming soon. And while we are preparing for the ultimate event or the event, many people are anxious and worried about their future. And here, the message to us is the same. If we, Shama, hear and obey the Word of God, God has demonstrated His faithfulness to the Israelites in spite of their disobedience, He will continue to demonstrate His faithfulness to you and I so that we will all cross the finishing line. And that is a condition that we need to be obedient to His covenant. I think that is the essence of Deuteronomy and I think it's very applicable for us today. When I heard from my wife that the kids had complained and said that the pastor had done nothing, I immediately shama. I heard and obey. I called up the parents with their express permission. I got a few guys to drive a few cars. We had a one-day outing from the early morning to the late evening. And we went swimming, we went cycling, we went hiking and eat all the junk food and all supposed to be eaten, but the kids were happy nevertheless. And we had a wonderful day out together. And I think the kids will not forget me, at least in those times, for many months to come. I think likewise, when God speaks to us today, do we have this heart? And say, Lord, you have spoken to me. I will be obedient to you. In all areas of my life, begins with my family, begins with my community, by extension to the world around me. How can I be a living witness for you? In spite of the challenges that I may face in my own home, you know, every home, every family, every person has an unpublished chapter. And sometimes, we call it the dark side. But the Lord is gracious. The Lord is kind. He has demonstrated His faithfulness to Israel in spite of their repeated disobedience. But His ultimate goal is to bring His people to enjoy the blessings because there are fruits and blessings when we obey the Lord fully and keep in touch and in steps with His covenant that has been so clearly expressed to us. May 
Ballesteros Church in the coming months continue to hear the Word of God. And when God speaks to this church, may we express with one word, Shama, I have heard you and I will be obedient to you. May the Lord bless us. Lord, as we look at the life of Jesus, His absolute obedience to your counsel, to your calling and to your will is truly an example for all of us to learn and to follow. May the word Shama codifies in our hearts and our minds that we will always listen and obey your instruction and thank you for the covenantal relationship that in spite of our flaws and defects that you promised to be with us, and your purpose is to ensure that every one of us will cross the finishing line and enter into your promised land in the days to come. So Father, may you continue to bless this church with the knowledge of your word and the counsel of the Spirit and the, and the application of your word in all areas of our lives. May the eternal love of God, the transforming grace of Jesus Christ and the loving presence of God, Holy Spirit, be with this congregation and forevermore. Amen.